Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As always, leaving a comment or a like are very much appreciated as they help with the algorithm. And let's jump right into it. At the moment, the cryptocurrency market is quite green. Uh, there's no actual explanation as to why the market has moved up. I would simply assume that over the last four or five months, as we've been discussing, uh, that Bitcoin's price looks a little weird, or the altcoins seem a little bit low right now, uh, that this is simply just a an actual organic movement of prices potentially moving up. It says altcoins rack up 30% gains as Bitcoin price chases after 39 thousand dollars there's a lot of discussion going on right now as to if bitcoin's price is going to be moving to forty thousand dollars sometime even over the course of today we have seen multiple many times before in the past if bitcoin did move up by one percent usually altcoins would move up by around seven percent at the exact same time so this movement of bitcoin only being up between three four five percent depending on when you're actually looking at the price as an altcoin shooting up between 12 to 30% just seems completely logical. Um, no, once again, actual uh, evidence or reasoning set for one as to why the cryptocurrency market has moved back up or is beginning to gain once again in prices actually out there. It says technical analysis, Ethereum rallies 10%. Why more gains seem possible? Yeah, it's because the optimism is slightly back within the crypto currency market. The timing is also extremely weird. Uh, I'm sure other people usually don't talk about the actual timing of things, but uh, for some reason, does it? So first of all, uh, happy February, everyone. That's number one. Uh, two, doesn't it seem weird that this happens over and over, usually at the beginning of every single year in the cryptocurrency space where prices for some reason in January are usually having a very difficult time. And then around February, usually February 1st, prices begin to move back up. It's as if some type of really weird switch has it activated in the financial world and therefore January must be some type of a negative month and therefore February usually begins with the uptick once again in prices. Kind of weird, right? Like it's actually this really weird, um, if you look at even financial news over the course of January, meaning yesterday and the entire month before, uh, it was s depressing. It was slightly down the entire time. It was January's not a good month, but for some reason, as we enter February, nearly every single year, this is kind of like extra optimism uh, moving forward. It says Ethereum price analysis, Ethereum up 12% in the last seven days. Is it forming an uptrend? I would hope so. I would actually completely assume so. There's still no actual logical reason that anyone can give me as to why the cryptocurrency prices uh, staggered or started moving lower around September, October, November of last year. Like I understand that there were many other world events, but as far as the actual accumulation of these assets, the people who were buying them, the cryptocurrency funds that were created, like the, remember we were talking about before that one company created a $700 million cryptocurrency fund in the price I think prices actually even went down that day. So we know that all the upgrades are coming. We know that these systems haven't, uh, the, at least the larger coins, uh, haven't been affected too much. As in, uh, we know that Ethereum is slow. Yeah, we got that part. Ethereum has had two upgrades since then. And even also other side chains and other wrapped around things around Ethereum as well. We know that Ethereum 2.0, which they're trying to get us to call the consensus layer, which nobody's going to do is also on the way as we are now in February. This means we are more closer than ever before. Uh, so why why any negativity in the cryptocurrency market? Why do we continuously get people who come out to scream and say, hey, uh, well, Bitcoin's price is you know 70,000, but it has to move lower before it can move back up. Why? Who dictates that? Who says that Bitcoin's price has to move down and why every single time that we end up do moving down, everyone begins to panic even though they were just simply stating before that the Bitcoin price had to actually move down and then when we actually are lower down, we get tons of confusion as to why we can't move back up. Sorry if I'm, I'm rambling. I was, I was discussing with my friend yesterday. Hello, friend. You know exactly who you are. Uh, about the cryptocurrency market because we, we, as much as we lie to ourselves and tell ourselves that when we meet to go hang out that we're not going to talk about crypto or NFTs, about eight and a half minutes later, after we're done saying, hey, how are you? We end up getting into the actual cryptocurrency market. And he he mentioned something along the lines of me. Um, I don't even know how to really explain it anymore. Like, I'm I'm really tired of the, the nonsense in the cryptocurrency space. So I 
tried to be as honest with you as possible. I know a lot of people do not like honesty at all. I've noticed that very much so over the last couple of weeks as I've kind of like changed my tone in the videos because I'm still the same person. I would assume I'm still the same person, but it's more of a let's be completely realistic and honest about this market as, as we, you know, continue to move forward and we're actually inside of it as far as where prices are actually going to go, where prices should actually be, and just calling, uh, if you will, uh, BS and or nonsense on like really stupid things that are happening within the cryptocurrency market and people talking about where prices are going to go. Didn't it seem a little odd as Bitcoin's price was trending and Ethereum's price was trending completely sideways that all the crypto analysts had nothing to say? The, 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 the price news was completely sparse and, and dry and parched. But the moment that we actually get any type of movement upward, all the news is then once again optimistic from all these people. I, I don't know. I'm I've 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 grown as as I've as I've been longer in the cryptocurrency market as I'm sure many of you have. You kind of get tired of all like the. It's not called white noise. It's like the, like the, the extra fuzz kind of floating around. Like just give actual real proper news as to what's happening in the cryptocurrency market as opposed to any type of. Anyway, the point is. Uh, sorry for rambling. It says Bitcoin price inches close to $40,000. Will the next leg up skyrocket the price to $47,000? That is a gigantic question mark. And nobody knows. Why does nobody know? Because that's just simply how Bitcoin actually is moving right now. We have understood and have seen and have heard from Chainalysis and Glassnode and many other analytics companies uh, that whales are controlling and or are completely moving the market right now. The news that we heard last time when we were talking about Bitcoin being at 37,000 and then dipping down to 32,000, where a lot of people were saying that Bitcoin had to go down to 15,000, but that news has completely disappeared uh, because we see that Bitcoin is moving back up right now, is that Bitcoin had to go back to 40,000 and then to 42,000 to show an actual uh, cryptocurrency bull market trend reversal kind of thing going on. So as we are near... $40,000, the $42,000 number has completely disappeared from many different websites, and 40, 47000 is now the, the new brand shiny number that we have to hit, and apparently in order for us to continue our bull run trend, which should have also never ended before because there was no actual reason for it. It says Ethereum could gain pace above 2,800. Yes, I assume this is happening if Bitcoin actually moves a lot higher. Bitcoin and Ethereum gain bullish momentum. Solana and Luna rally. It says Bitcoin trading volume during four market crashes suggests sellers are giving up. That's right. For some reason, people were selling off tons of cryptocurrencies over the last couple of months. Either they were gigantic whales who were trying to move the market or they were very new people who were actually in the market. I find it extremely weird that uh, anyone... No, no, I guess it does make a lot of sense. I was going to say anyone who's actually new to the market would actually sell off their coins, but I assume it has to do with a lot of impatience. This happens across every single market. It's the weirdest thing in the entire world. You could have an asset that you might even yourself believe could potentially at some point in the future, four, five, six, 12x in price. But if there's no price movement for two or three months, people end up selling off. It's the weirdest thing. Uh, but I mean, to each his own. Everyone has their own different investment portfolio and, you know, some of them will make it and some of them will not. A lot of the metrics are now showing that people who were selling off before have become exhausted and or they're broke and simply have no more to actually sell off into the market. The uh, buying demand has remained relatively the same, even if it's just uh, the, the switch from the actual moving from cryptocurrency exchanges to um, over-the-counter buying which is something that we've also seen taking place a lot as well. The cryptocurrency funds and all the other hedge funds and ETFs around the world that have actually launched and that are actually spot Bitcoin ETFs are not usually buying on cryptocurrency exchanges. They're buying on over-the-counter markets so that it does not actually spill over into the cryptocurrency space. As one would expect, as the prices move back up, a lot of people are talking about moon scenarios and where the prices are going to go, how great things are now now going to be for 2022, where prices could be moving to and exactly how high things are going to go. It says top crypto analyst unveils a mega moon scenario for Bitcoin this year. It says a closely followed crypto strategist and trader 
is unveiling a scenario where Bitcoin regains its bullish momentum and skyrockets over 80% this year. In a new strategy session, pseudonymous analyst Don Alt says that Bitcoin is trading in a wide range in the weekly time frame between 33,000 and 60,000 in the weekly time frame. Does that mean that this week Bitcoin is going to go to $60,000? Okay. According to Don Alt, the massive range offers two solid entry opportunities for Bitcoin. He said there are two places where you can take a trade in this instance. One is the range low, 33,000, which I did. And then two, I'm going to take that trade if it presents itself is breakdown into reclaim of 33,000 into OK. Mega moon it to $60,000. I didn't understand any of that because a lot of that was broken a move from the range low of 33000 to a high of $60,000 represents a potential upside of 81% for Bitcoin. So I'm going to assume if by the end of, I give it even to Wednesday, if by the end of Wednesday we have come into contact with a $42,000, $45,000 Bitcoin, I assume any discussion of Bitcoin falling to $15,000 or $22,000 will have completely disappeared and we will once again be talking about exactly how high Bitcoin is going to go or how high Bitcoin is going to moon or uh, exactly where Bitcoin's price is going to be in the uh, next phase of this year. No, it's, it's, it's actually really weird. The beginning of the year for some reason is always very pessimistic in the cryptocurrency market. Do you remember many years ago when we were talking about... Um, like this, not the, not the stock market per se, but it was something along the lines of a lot of people used to predict that September and October would be terrible months for the cryptocurrency uh, space price wise, uh, simply because as people who were stock traders came back from vacation and holiday at the end of August and back into September, that they I, I'm, I'm not joking. This was a real thing that was being spread around. That therefore they were more pessimistic about the prices of stocks or about their life from coming back from vacation. That therefore the crypt the stock market would perform worse in September and October. And I was like, who who thought of that thing? And that then became a very big thing in the cryptocurrency space where people just kind of assumed that September and October would be bad months price wise for the cryptocurrency space. And now for some reason that's also spilled into. January as well. This was also around the same exact time, it, it, very weird space, around the same exact time that we were getting tons of news that in uh, 2017, 18, and 19, that the only way for Bitcoin to move back up was to have an actual Bitcoin ETF and Bitcoin wouldn't move up besides that. A lot of, uh, I don't know what, it, what, what to even call these things. They're not like old wives tales. They're just really weird things that pop up in the cryptocurrency spotlight that people believe certain things have to take place. It's the same exact thing like when we hit summertime. A lot of people believe that because more people are outside and therefore in the sun and not at their personal computers, that therefore Bitcoin's price will also suffer a bit because people prefer to get sun as opposed to making money online. If that's actually true, I'm not really sure, but that's usually the idea behind it. Also, in the news. Um, now, this one was not surprising to me at all because it seems completely logical based on the news that we've been having for the last two years. Uh, it says stocks rally to end a dismal January. Once again, the idea of a terrible, sad January taking place. But stocks have also rallied across the board around the world. Stocks have begun to move back up. Um, a lot of people on the, on the traditional financial side and on the cryptocurrency side are making sure to, uh, what do you call it? Announced that uh, it was one of the worst months ever for the market. Really funny. Apparently, the stock market had its worst month uh, since March 2020. We all remember what happened. And also, it says crypto market closes and on worst January performance since 2015. Very, very weird. Uh, the other odd part is that uh, when I saw the news that stocks had rallied, it then made a lot more since the cryptocurrency market had rallied. As I'm almost certain at this point that there's some, some type of direct correlation between these markets and their actual movements and the idea that, uh, which is kind of terrifying if you want to be completely honest about it, that for some reason the cryptocurrency market does not move unless the stock market is moving. Why are they so evenly connected? Why is Bitcoin's price not moving upward? Remember the news before? You got to remember this, that we had sometime last year that of all the Bitcoin left you know, on, on, on the planet that exists, 25% uh, of it was on cryptocurrency exchanges, meaning one out of every four Bitcoin 
were left on a cryptocurrency exchange for you to be able to buy. The next month, it was 20% and then 18%. And the news that we had about three or four weeks ago was that only 12% of all the Bitcoin on the planet was on cryptocurrency exchanges. And I was like, I'm pretty sure relatively soon we're going to get some news that it says 10%, 8%, 6%. And at that same exact time, Bitcoin's price also fell down. So also not making a lot of sense as we actually mathematically know how much Bitcoin is left, how much is being created by the network, how much billionaires are actually buying as well. You can also, and these are the billionaires who have come out openly to say, hey, we're buying up tons of Bitcoin. And then we also see the other whale addresses. We heard about the third biggest whale address multiple times over the course of January that was buying up tons of Bitcoin. And yet prices still went down and did not move up until we saw that the stock market was moving up as well. Something's weird, right? It's not just me. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's actually just me because I've, I've brought up this uh, idea to many other people and people are like, no, that doesn't make any sense. And I try to have like an open discussion, but no one ever wants to actually discuss the idea or the prospect that for some reason we are only moving with the actual movements of the stock market, but that's neither here nor there. And of course, uh, to not be left out of the party, Jim Cramer is once again in the News, it says, charts in history suggest that stocks and most commodities may have a strong 2022. How incredible it is as we enter into February that everyone has seemingly out of nowhere gotten a lot more optimistic about the the markets completely in general. Because I remember a lot of people, especially those on CNBC and other platforms who were talking quite negatively about the cryptocurrency space, stocks, commodities, mutual funds, ETFs, and we're even telling people or suggesting that people get into bonds at some point uh, relatively recently because of what the Federal Reserve was saying. Remember that? Yeah, remember? Yeah, see? Exactly. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. A couple days ago, when the Federal Reserve was talking about raising rates and uh, not doing as much buying as they were doing before, remember the markets fell because everyone was really pessimistic about it, and I said in about four or five days, no one's going to be talking about it anymore. And now everyone's super optimistic about the future, even though the Federal Reserve said that whatever they may plan on doing is going to happen sometime in March. Very weird markets. Um, I was chatting with a friend. I don't think he watches the channel, but for the love of goodness, if you do, stop it. Uh, I'll, I told you, a, a lot of people have been contacting me, talking to me about, you know, if, if they're getting news about inflation or how high prices are going, or you know, your money not doing what it was doing before if it was inside of your bank account. They're now coming to me, basically trying to, you know, hey, so have you heard about that that stock market thing? Where should I be putting my money? Those kind of conversations where they try to like sly and say it, but you know, but they're actually trying to say. One of my friends yesterday I brought up the discussion of, uh, you know, not being able to buy property. A property was too expensive, or something along that line. He was like, yeah, I've been thinking about buying gold, and I was like. We've been friends for a while, so I'm going to give it to you plainly. And I, a little message. I didn't send a long message. Just a little message uh, to basically try and tell him, you know, gold actually went down in price as we got news about inflation. So therefore, gold may not be the best thing. It actually went down by 1% when we had all the inflation news. Didn't even... What's the, what's the term? Like, in, in one ear and out the other? It, no, it, it didn't even hit the ear. Like, it just kind of bounced off and went out into the stratosphere. So... Um, yeah, I wonder how many other people out there right now are still buying up gold and silver with the expectation that at some point it's potentially going to outperform all markets. I had that conversation with someone years ago on this channel where someone was like, they were buying gold because they expected gold to outperform Bitcoin. And I was like, you know that Bitcoin's up by like 11 million percent, not a fake number. And they were like, yeah, gold's going to do the exact same thing. And I was like, you you think gold is, is going to $949,000 per, per ounce? Yes, I believe that. Okay. Anyway, so that's the cryptocurrency price news. Um, I won't lie. It's nice to see optimism once again back in all of the markets. Um, if we do indeed happen to be correlated to the stock market, and apparently, allegedly, things are looking pretty great in the stock market, and they continue to move up, and therefore the cryptocurrency market moves up. Well, I don't think many people would be too upset with that. Yeah, that's all the price news. A lot more optimism in the market. Always nice to see. And without further ado, 
let's move on. Also in very popular news right now, it says spoiler alert, and I don't know why they put that. I'm going to assume that's a gigantic typo because it doesn't make any sense. Asset manager Fidelity thinks that Bitcoin should be considered first and separate from all other digital assets that have come after it. They said this is huge considering the Fidelity Digital Assets Division's website opens up with, we envision a future, yeah, but you can type anything and simply not. Okay, according to Fidelity, they said Bitcoin is best understood as a monetary good and not as a technology. This is key because I think a lot of people don't, have you ever seen when people try to uh, discuss the actual inner workings of how email works as opposed to just saying send an email? They'd rather just send the email and use it as a tool than actually understand the actual technology behind it. I think a huge amount of people have given up on learning anything about Bitcoin, which I think is a bit of a shame because it's not that difficult to learn, like, you know, the mining algorithm and yada, yada, yada. Uh, but people prefer Bitcoin as a, as a tool of sending money back and forth. So there we go. They also believe it is highly unlikely for Bitcoin to be replaced by an improved digital asset for several reasons. The rest of the document more or less consists of stating and analyzing those reasons. This is uh, very popular news because Fidelity, here's the actual PDF thing right here. Very popular news because uh, Fidelity is a gigantic financial giant. They were one of the very first giants in the financial space, the, tr the traditional financial space, who announced that they were going to be getting into the cryptocurrency space. They they said originally, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking about getting into the space when we all knew that they were actually... Uh, knee deep in it. That's a terrible phrase, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, so uh, the idea is that, and I've mentioned to a lot of you before, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you, uh, or th they're gone. They've they, they've left the channel. I'm sure they're not watching anymore. You have to understand why people keep putting weight behind Bitcoin. I've forgotten what the actual metric is called. I've seen it before, stated somewhere. It's the idea of if something intangible continues to exist. Uh, the longer that that intangible item exists, the more likely it is to survive. This is why it's very significant when we talk about Bitcoin continuously being the number one coin, despite it still only having three transactions per second. No real upgrades, no real block size increases, none of those things. But alas, Bitcoin still remains number one. This is hyper significant. You have to understand, we know that there are other blockchains that are better or quicker or more robust than Bitcoin. But Bitcoin still remains the number one coin regardless of all of that. The same exact time, Bitcoin not having any downtime. I'm not going to preach once again to everyone out there. If you don't like Bitcoin, that is totally fine with me. Like, I actually do not care. I feel like I've, over the years, have done my uh, job to try and help people really understand exactly why Bitcoin is still number one and is going to make it. But I know 85% of people in the market either don't own any Bitcoin, do not plan on buying any Bitcoin, or simply don't care because they own tons of other altcoins. But it's more of a, just to let you know in the year 2032, when everything is currently then taking place, why the market then looks the way that it does at that point. Institutions have fallen in love with Bitcoin. And it became very obvious in 2017 that they had already done so since around 2014. And this is why it's significant once again. When we, whenever we get news that Fidelity, MicroStrategy, PayPal, any other company is buying up all the Bitcoin that's actually out there, I'm still confused as to why other people simply don't, like it just does not register in their heads. And I still keep getting tons of messages with people telling me to talk about Solana or uh, moon coin or bat ball baseball card coin or whatever these other really weird what was the other one what was it yesterday the the ones was it wonderland mercury i don't know what, it, what, what the, these things are being called anymore but anyway yeah so um just thought i'd uh, swing that your way as this was also incredibly popular news. Fidelity also being one of the uh, companies who originally tried to launch a Bitcoin ETF within the United States. And then we got news about two months ago that they simply packed their bags and just walked over into Canada and uh, did exactly what they were trying to do in the US almost instantaneously. So that's the Fidelity news. They pop up in the news every now and again. Quite uh, significant, if you will. All righty. Moving along. 
time is really funny. If you saw yesterday's video, do you remember what I was saying in the video? Like what I was, I, I'm pretty sure it was towards the end of the video. It was like, uh, what happened? Where is it? What's going on? After two years of development, Litecoin has finally launched its highly anticipated Mimble Wimble upgrade, opening the door to more privacy-oriented transactions on the network. I was just talking about this. This was nowhere in the news when I was making the video yesterday. It was nowhere in the news. Life is really, really weird how it works out that way. Mimble Wimble's integration into Litecoin came by the way of the Mimble Wimble extension, also known as MWeb, which allows the network's users to opt in to confidential transactions. MWeb lead developer David Burkett, who has been sponsored by the Litecoin Foundation, said the upgrade improves Litecoin's viability as a fungible currency that can be used for everyday transactions, pay employee salaries, and even purchase real estate. Mimblewimble is a privacy-focused decentralized protocol that derives its name from a tongue-tying spell from Harry Potter. The protocol has a confidentiality feature that allows users to conceal transaction information. It also provides a framework for other blockchains to enhance the usability of their cryptocurrency. This has been such a long time coming. It's actually, I mean, it's completely insane. Around 2013, one of the main discussions was that Bitcoin would eventually have private transactions. And everyone was like, wow, that's going to be a really crazy, weird future when you can use Bitcoin completely privately. I think a lot of that took a backseat as we saw Monero, Dash, Zcash, Coin, uh, all popping up, having private transactions. Wonderful, absolutely incredible. Part of the issue ended up being is that regulators... Uh, and governments do not like people being able to transact in the money that they have in a private manner. It all has to be transparent. They have to know where it's going, who it's going to, why it's going to them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of these coins that have private transactions completely disappeared from cryptocurrency exchanges in 2017 and 2018. A lot of people were asking me why I did not have these coins in my portfolio, and I was like, because government. Just think logically like one extra step, not being mean to anyone who was asking the question. It's more of a, you know, why would I put my portfolio at risk of having a coin that I know is going to start dropping down in price because governments don't want anyone to actually have said coin. This was around the same exact time. I believe it was Dash. I'm not a, a thousand percent sure anymore. One of the coins had a feature where you were able to basically switch on and off your private transactions. And this is when I believe it was also added to... Coinbase, and I believe Gemini also added it as well. One of the three major coins that had private transactions, this is how they added it to their platform. They basically said, if you are going to send it to us, you have to turn off the switch that basically is having private transactions so that we can actually get it to our platform. And basically, so we can know exactly who you are and which coins that you own. So this is why they added on this Memble Wimble thing, the actual idea of being able to either conceal your information if you're using it amongst you or your friends or any other platform, or if you're sending it, I assume, to a cryptocurrency exchange that you're going to have to uh, show them exactly who you are for this transaction. This is absolutely incredible. Um, I wish Litecoin had more of a spotlight in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, Litecoin, once again, is usually a very major test net for Bitcoin, uh, as I mentioned before and the day before that and many other times before, so we don't have to go back into that once Again, but I it's it's kind of weird, but I, I think it's all just hype. A lot of other people, not the Litecoin thing, a lot of other people prefer other coins and things that are brand new that people are telling them could potentially eventually hit the price of Bitcoin, i.e., this new coin has come out, it's going to destroy Ethereum. This new coin has come out, it is going to destroy Bitcoin. It is only $14 currently on the market. It can definitely go as high as Ethereum can. You should start buying this brand new coin. And it causes Litecoin and many other legacy coins to be uh, pushed into the back. But um, they're still there ticking along. So um, this now means, as far as the information that we got back in the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019, that apparently this network upgrade can also then be implemented onto Bitcoin to see if it actually ends up working as it is now working on Litecoin. Therefore, it should be working on or could work on Bitcoin as well. But I guess that will only uh, be a matter of time before Bitcoin also has private uh, transactions. Yeah, Litecoin's price is only up by around, I think, 4 or 5%. I think uh, like many other upgrades, uh, they took a little bit too long 
waiting for the actual implementation of it. But also, once again, I'm not a coder, so I can't tell you exactly uh, how long this would normally take to actually initiate private transactions on an entire blockchain. Uh, this one was actually quite funny. It's clearly a typo, but I saw it and I was like, wait a minute. It says Litecoin's Mimblewimble upgrade crumbles bears. That is quite intense. Litecoin price poised for $250,000. Once again, the K is definitely a, a typo. I assume they mean $250 in general because Litecoin's price is currently around 110 Yeah, very weird. Uh, one of the most, if not the most popular news story of the day. I'm glad that they finally uh, got this going. I hope it works out for them. And I hope that eventually Bitcoin also has this implemented as well. Yeah, without further ado, let's move on. Now, this was also quite popular news. I don't usually care for this news because I know that it's normally nonsense especially if you've been watching over the last couple of years. However, uh, there were like a chain of events that ended up taking place. Uh, and this is the first one that ended up happening and coming out in the news. And for some reason, all the other news of today on this topic follow the exact same trend. I'll explain. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has unveiled the Indian budget for 2022 to 2023, with two major announcements around cryptocurrencies, the finance minister has proposed a taxation rate of 30% on any income arising from the transfer of any digital asset. Moreover, it is reported that no deduction in, re in respect of any expenditure or allowance will be allowed when compiling computing such income an exception will only be made by including the cost of acquisition. So, the really weird part is that India has, since 2017, been talking about banning cryptocurrencies. Since 2018, 19, 2020, and the end of 2021, yep, every single one of those times, every single time that they've had a parliament session, there was a rumor going around that they were going to be regulating and or banning cryptocurrencies completely outright. And part of the news was is that, uh, no, I, I, I guess that was basically it. They were planning on banning it. And then sometime around 2019, 2020, we had news that they may be thinking of actually regulating it. However, every single time that the the notes, the session, whatever, actually went to parliament, uh, crypto, Bitcoin, anything was never actually written inside of the paperwork. So randomly, um, for the actual budget for this year, and I assume part of next year as well, uh, there's now a, a a section about the actual taxation of cryptocurrencies within it, which a lot of people were simply not expecting. Here's the actual tweet forward right here of her saying it just to show you that this actually did end up taking place, which a lot of people were very surprised about because once again, there was no mention of it anywhere before. On top of that discussion... Apparently, she also mentioned that there allegedly is that India is preparing their central bank digital currency, and it's going to be coming by either this year or next year. Why is this weird? Because we had news before from Japan, India, and two other countries that not only were they not working on a central bank digital currency, but they thought it was complete nonsense. The idea of having a digital currency would do absolutely nothing for them, wasn't going to further the economy, and therefore it was simply never going to happen. So now we have news that apparently this is already, and I told you it was, the same as the, as, as the US one. And probably the Canadian one and probably the European one, which we've also had like some slight news uh, between Germany and France before actually trying to develop one. Uh, all these things are probably already created. They're trying to figure out exactly how to roll them out and if there's going to be an actual gigantic massive backlash against them for actually trying to roll this thing out there. So um, as it stands right now, it looks like not only are cryptocurrencies not going to be banned in India... They're going to be taxed. 30% is, I think, absolutely outrageous. And I assume we're going to have a lot of uh, crypto brain drain happening from India in the very near future if the 30% does actually go through. Because once again, there are at least four to five different countries on the planet that have a 0% tax rate for cryptocurrencies. 
why anybody would want to subject themselves to 30%, I'm not exactly really sure. Anyway, so yeah, and they're also planning on having a central bank digital currency. How exactly that's going to work out, I'm not really sure. Um, apparently, according to the news that I've been looking at, as I, you know, I like finance news. I like news about financial inclusion. I know a lot of people out there don't actually care about other people, but alas, here we are. Um, when it comes to the actual people around the world who are actually included in the current financial system, it's not a lot of people, especially when you look at many other parts in Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia, India, what have you. There's a huge portion of the population, I believe, as far as I know, it's around half of the population isn't really included in the current financial structure, uh, not only of the world, but also of India. So how exactly they plan on rolling this out to everyone, I'm not really sure, especially when most people don't even have a bank account, is just one gigantic question mark in the sky uh, for me. Yeah. It says, India plans crypto training session. Oh, yeah. Also, apparently, the, the, it, there was no mention of banning anywhere in there, but it's more so they're going to have something where they're going to be training people on what digital currencies are, how cryptocurrencies are used. And it's like, ah, the same exact thing you were planning on doing in 2018, but now you're releasing it in actual paper form. So how surprising, right? I told you before, if a government wants to ban something, they're just simply going to ban it. There's no actual, there's no discussion. They don't ask for public comment. Uh, who, who, who did it recently? There was some country, it was about a week ago, uh, they were discussing the potential idea, I think, of banning or restricting cryptocurrencies, but they wanted public opinion. And I was like, they don't want public opinion. They never want actual public opinion. It's already been decided behind the scenes, but they have to make it seem as if you are also in the discussion as well so that people don't, uh, you know. And also tying into this as well, once again, super weird how this news is just coming out at the same exact time as everything else about India because we probably would not have gotten this news. So I assume this news was released based off of the news that we were just given like five seconds ago. It says a recent survey by Deloitte shows that 82% of Indians prepared plan to invest in cryptocurrency when the government provides more clarity surrounding the regulation of crypto assets. Moreover, 77% of respondents want cryptocurrency to be treated as securities. Now, here's where it gets a little ridiculous. Apparently, there were only 1,800 people who were given this survey. Last I checked, uh, there were nearly or at or slightly above a billion people in India. I would have respected this a little bit more if it had maybe 50,000 people surveyed, 100,000 people surveyed. A million, you know, a, a, a million's not really that bad when you factor in the number a billion. So just going to throw that uh, out there. Uh, the, the numbers were kind of all over the place. Um, also, think about it this way. And why do I say those numbers? Because you get a, a more accurate reading, of course, the, the more numbers that you actually have. Uh, you can take 1,800 people from a very rich area in India and ask them how they feel about the cryptocurrency market. Do they plan on getting into crypto? The numbers then becomes heavily skewed if you're only talking to certain people on a certain street at a certain time who have a certain amount of wealth in their pockets. 55% said that they have invested in cryptocurrencies and will continue to do so. A further 26% said that they have not invested in cryptocurrencies but are willing to invest once the government provides more clarity. Sure, why not? Meanwhile, 10% said that they have invested in crypto but will avoid investing in the asset class in the future. Good for them. The remaining 7.8% said that they are against investing in crypto. The report also notes that about 20 million people in India have invested in cryptocurrency. How do you get those numbers? Why not? Tr I would rather Deloitte wait or any other company. I don't care if it's Deloitte or not. Wait an entire year to get an actual survey of 20 million people. We'd have a very accurate thing. What was that other thing that we had before? It was something about people in Canada. It was something, it, it was like 79% of people in Canada are invested in crypto. And I was like, what? Where? What are you talking about? There was also something before. It was like 84% of people in America. And they, 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 of course, took respondents from, I think it was Miami, New York, Los Angeles, and somewhere else. And I was like, oh, so, you know, the rich capitals. You're talking to rich people as if they, you know, do do you own crypto? Well, of course I do. You know, I'm one of the blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so uh, across the board, a little weird. Um, I assume 
this will be great for the cryptocurrency market as they're no longer banning crypto because they weren't going to do it in the first place. This does open the door, the potential door, to a billion people on the planet entering the cryptocurrency market. Um, at least in some capacity. I assume if it's taken them this long to actually make any type of framework, they probably will not have actual access to the worldwide cryptocurrency market. They will probably only be able to use cryptocurrency exchanges that are within that country uh, at any given time, which is just how governments work. Yeah, that's all the uh, India news. Kind of weird, right? All righty, let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbite University, How's Life Austin, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on, Chris Hakim, Wilkins, Empire Queen, Stake It With Valor, Fudweiser, Mortified, Roman Gable, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony, Ambrosky, The Dealers, Zen, Red Plum, Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Not Brain, Captain, Something in the Z-Way Lay, I got it right, Crypto Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos was like, Mobarazzi, Jojo, Shasho, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lorna Silver, Quarter, Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Paternoster, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Panana, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, Damon James, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila Nahan, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyer, Nosoroma, John Sarson, The Anima Reader, Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grace, Sigma, Hironi, Massive in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, what? Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien, Setsuna, Rich Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mann, Jalavodi, Jim Gardner, Jimmy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch, Jesse, Everyday, and Kyle Skip, Blade Day, Yester, Crypto, Bodemi, Boatface, Any Seven, Smash Corner, Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Ramacha, Nisa, All Crypto with Lionel. Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. Thank you to everyone who left a like, has commented, uh, or has subscribed. Thank you very, very much. I said what because uh, BitTorrent Token now says bit old, okay, and is up by 40%. Ah, it also has $200,000 trading volume. That makes a little bit more sense. Why we still have coins in the top 50 that have $200,000 trading volume is nonsense. Uh, but at the moment, Bitcoin is currently up by 3.13%. It is up to $38,300. It skyrocketed up and then started to taper off at a certain point. Ethereum is at 2,749. It is up by 8%. Binance Coin is up by only 2, which is kind of weird. Solana is up by 16. Luna is up by 13. And Polkadot are up by 10. These are the uh, the trifecta of the hype coins for this uh, market bull run session. Uh, a lot of people are considering Solana and Luna and Polkadot to be the Ethereum destroyers of this year. So this is why I assume they have extra hype in their uh, price movement. Shiba Inu is up by 4. Avalanche is up by 6. Cosmos is up by 11. Polygon is up by 5. Litecoin is up by 5 as well. Uniswap is up by 8. Near Protocol is up by 8 as well. FTT token is up by 8. Phantom is up by 8. Decentraland is up by 7% as well. Anything else crazy or spectacular? It's nice to see the market in green, uh, but you see this taper off right around here as Bitcoin looks like it's still... Uh, not moving up too well. And the winner of the day so far is BTT Old, which should be around coin number 70 because there's no one actually trading it. Like you can do this with one person for those of you who did not know. Yeah, I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope you all have a great day, a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.